So, uh, National Bioinformatics Infrastructure Sweden. So, since, uh, since you're here, you have some idea what this is. Um, but <clears throat> it's, it's basically the SciLife Lab Bioinformatics platform. Uh, we're more than 100 staff now. I think the uh, last figure I heard was closer to 120, actually. Um, and we are split and distributed over six different universities across Sweden, all the way from, from Lund, where I'm from in the south, up to Umeå. Um, <clears throat> and we cover a lot of different areas of bioinformatics, not only the parts that we have been covering this course. And uh, this is a very rough um, classification of types of projects that we have been supporting in the past. Um, but of course, there's a lot of overlap if you're working with next generation sequencing, which is a large part here. Some of it will also be related to biostatistics and, and so on, or it could be uh, several types of omics data you're working with. So it's both NGS and proteomics, for example. So once you generate the data, uh, there's also a large portion of data management. So how to work with and, and submit the data and, and make repositories and so on. So uh, it's a general view, but as you see, it's quite diverse. Um, best resource to start at is actually to go to the NBIS webpage, so nbis.se, and most of the information uh, from anything from news, uh, courses, etc., support opportunities and so on are all found there. And we have basically three main core activities, the support, the infrastructure, and the training and the training you've already seen because you're, you're here at the course, but there's of course a lot of other courses as well that you can have a look out for. Um, so I will just start talking about the, the support. The easiest access is to join us online for these drop-in sessions that we have. So each week, uh, on Tuesdays at two. There's a link that you can find on the NBIS webpage and you can just drop in. Um, you will have the possibility of asking some question, describing your, your question or your problem, what you'd like to have us help you with. Then you'll be sent on to one of the breakout rooms to discuss with an expert of the field of interest so that we try to to match the bioinformaticians expertise with the type of questions that you may have. Um, so that's, that's been very popular uh, and it's really easily as accessible, but you can, you can sit in your office and just join on Zoom and, and get some, some answers from your questions. And if we cannot answer it right there and then, or it needs some extra uh, uh, support, we also have other uh, support tracks anywhere from these study design and project consultations that are free of charge. So you can just fill in a form uh, on the nbis.se webpage and request a consultation. And then the coordinators will try and find a, a bioinformatician that has the expertise that you would require. And you set up a meeting either online or in person, but usually online because as you saw, we are distributed, so we're, we're working across the universities. <clears throat> and that's not, no hands-on work, but you can get a lot of help on how to design your project or how to solve certain issues that you might have faced along the way. Um, and we do this because we think it's so important that study design is done right, so that the analysis um, actually can be done in a good way and that you can get the most out of the resources that you spend both in time and of course grant money etc so really I, I i encourage you to use this opportunity both with the drop-ins and the study sign and, and for this reason we don't charge anything for this so you're free to to join discuss your problems and, and get our input on it when it comes to more hands-on work 
we have two tracks that are fee for service. So it's the short, medium term uh, support track, and then it's the partner project. Uh, so these are all there you pay for the services that we provide. And uh, for the short, medium term, it's 800 hours per, or 800 kronos per hour. And the way that we set that up is basically that we estimate how much work is required or that we think you would need and draw a contract with that with the PI. Uh, and then we, we document the hours that we use. And if we use less than what we estimated, because it's really difficult to estimate, then the, the invoice will only be on the hours we actually use. So you don't pay extra for, for us estimating a large amount of, of hours. Um, oftentimes there will be additional things that you want to have done. You discover something along the way in the analysis and you might want to have some extra and then we can do extensions. So, so it's really flexible, but it's the reason for this contract is basically so that you would have an understanding or knowledge about roughly how much will it cost to, to run this analysis that you can see that it fits in the budget, basically. <clears throat> we say short and medium term support because it can be any, any way from a few hours to several years that we are involved part-time in the projects. For the long-term support, um, it's 500 hours support, and it's usually spread over one to two years. And this is application-based. So you would send in an application, relatively short and, and, and simple uh, application where you describe uh, your, your uh, research, what you would like to do, uh, and also what kind of support you would need from the MBIS uh, long-term support staff. It's free, and the reason is because Wallenberg is actually paying for that. So it's already prepaid, but instead of you getting a grant in, the, in money, you get it in, in hours of bioinformatics support. So there's an external group that will rank these projects. Um, and then we will take on a number of those. And I think it's like three application rounds usually per year. Uh, the support project stages, study design, of course, very important first part. That we're, we're really happy to be involved and discuss with you long before you're generating any data. Then you have the data generation part and the standard uh, analysis, perhaps, and that's often happening on other platforms like NGI, like Olga was talking about earlier. Um, and you get some reports and, and results from there. And then downstream again, NBIS can take uh, the lead of the bioinformatics analysis, which are more tailored analysis to the particular research project that you may have. And we, as, as this is a collaboration, if we provide uh, significant inputs for a manuscript or a publication, then usually we have co-authorships in that and we can help out also with the uh, responses from reviewers when they have uh, comments or want you to reanalyze something to validate some, some parts of, of the analysis, then we can also be involved in, in supporting that. So we're happy to be involved in the beginning. And then very commonly, we are involved in the downstream bioinformatics analysis after the, for example, the sequence uh, provider has done their work and done the standard analysis. Infrastructure. So this is um, more infrastructure in terms of different ser services such as uh, computational resources. You've all seen Upmax, etc., cetera, um, and tools, guidelines that could be useful for the life science community as a whole. So <clears throat> this relates both to sensitive data. Some of you might be working with sensitive data that on the one hand, you need to keep private, um, but at the same time, it should be possible to access for, for other research, uh, researchers. 
So a lot of work has been put into working with the federated EGA, uh, which is the European Genome Phenome Archive, where you can deposit uh, sensitive data or information about sensitive data so that you, you can find that there have been, uh, these data are available, and then you can then apply to get access. So it's still following all the rules that are required for these sensitive data, but it's still searchable and findable by other researchers. Um, data management is also a part that is expanding very rapidly. With more and more data becoming available, it's really important to make sure that these are um, <clears throat> handled in, in, uh, and published so that others can also benefit from the data that's been generated and that these can also be cited in, in literature. Uh, some tools we're maintaining, these are typically tools that are, <clears throat> that have been developed uh, in Sweden, so they are Swedish software, and that a there's a large user base. So, so there's, it's a relatively short list because it takes quite a lot of effort to, to maintain some of these, but it, it's like Mr. Base, for example, that has a lot of users. Uh, throughout the world, actually. Uh, a few words about data management. Uh, we have data stewards that can help you to, to um, deposit data. There are courses, uh, guidelines that you can find online on the NBIS webpage and links to that, and templates and tools. For example, now um, VR, so the National Research Council, is requiring that you have a data plan when you when you apply for for money or for grants there, um, and and uh, in this data management from NBIS, the data stewards etc., they can help you to to set up such a plan so that you follow the guidelines from from VR. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely something that you need to think about. And, and becomes more and more important as, as um, this field is developing. Computer storage, you've already used uh, RACAM in Mutmax, and we have staff members here, so we don't, we're not responsible for the clusters, but we have staff that can help out if you have issues with the, with the systems or if you need specific uh, softwares to be installed, um, user access, uh, such things. Uh, so there's a support uh, email address, which is, I think, support at upmux.uu.se, yeah. Uh, where you can get help if you need some uh, additional support when, when running these resources. <coughs> So Upmax is one of those, um, and there's a lot of, of uh, tools and softwares with many different versions already pre-installed, which is very nice in a way. You don't have to bother about setting all those, those things up um, when you start a new project. And you've, you've used that quite extensively during the course, so I think I don't need to say too much more about that. Um, the only thing that could be good to know is that we have separate systems for use, using a regular project, but if you have sensitive data, then there are other compute resources that you should be using, just so you're aware of that when you apply for, for compute time. Um, Elixir is the European infrastructure for biological information, and NBIS is uh, an a member of that, and we're the Swedish node of, of Elixir. And we have been involved in a number of different international projects throughout. And I think that that interaction will be, become more and more important as we move forward. Um, we are involved in specific projects um, and contributions such as the pro human protein atlas, etc., but also in training. So that comes and leads to the training then. Um, you've already taken the introductory course, but there's a lot of other courses available. 
um, as we've already told you, all of this material when it comes to this course, but also other courses are available online. So you can go in and have a look at, at these courses, even if you cannot join that particular course uh, on a specific date. We have a mentoring program that's specific for um, PhD students. So you get a, an advisor from us so that you can get input and information about how you could analyze your data. So there's no hands on, but it's a lot of advice. And we also have these grand meetings, I think it's twice a year. Um, that's also very good for the networking and you get to discuss with a lot of other PhD students that are also uh, working hard on the bioinformatics side of things. And so I think usually there's a lot of good exchange between the PhD students uh, supervisors and, and us at Envis. Uh, we tried, we try as much as possible to have a rapid knowledge transfer, not only through courses, but also these drop-in sessions that I already mentioned. And really take the opportunity of, of joining them, even if it's a tiny question. If it saves you a day, why not? Right? It doesn't have to be a, a really complicated or big question that you have. Um, and then while being involved in the different research projects, we also try to, to transfer the knowledge so that the group have the possibility and capacity to continue analysis in a similar fashion, for example, with new data sets. And then we, we do develop uh, portable tools and workflows and make those available typically through uh, GitHub so that there are tools that you could use once you know how to, to um, work with these. Training opportunities, yeah, I guess this is the, the main link that would be useful for you. Um, and you can find the different courses there. And then there are some example courses here in Python or R or biostatistics and so on. And there, there has even been some course, I don't know if it's, it will be given again, but I thought it was an interesting one where they have uh, bioinformatics for PIs. That's something maybe you can recommend for your PIs to have a look at. So if they are not doing bioinformatics, they could, they could still benefit from this course to get a better understanding of what is, what does it mean doing bioinformatics? And it might be, uh, they would be better uh, PIs from that. So we'll see if that will be given again. That has been given, I think it was very popular, um, but I don't know when and if that will be given again. Yeah, so with that, thank you for listening.